Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rebecca Keppel. Today's video is another episode in the quick and easy card series and today we're going to be featuring guy or masculine cards. Lots of card makers struggle with masculine cards because there's not a ton of products on the market that really help you create them. So in this video, I'm gonna feature four different quick and easy guy or masculine cards. Most of the card making products for guys or masculine cards are for Father's Day. And that's not the only day that we wanna give our guys cards, right? So I decided to feature birthday cards today. My first tip for creating a more masculine card is to look at patterns like wood grains and change up your color scheme. If you've seen my six ways to use embossing folders video, you know that I love Sunny Studios six by six embossing folders. This one is a wood grain pattern that is perfect for masculine cards. I've embossed an A2 white cardstock panel with the wood grain folder. If you've watched any of my videos at all, you know I tend to use really bright colors, but for a masculine background, I'm gonna mix up my usual colors and try some Distress Oxide in Gathered Twigs. I'm using a Tim Holtz Mini Foam Ink Blender to apply the Gathered Twigs ink over the embossed panel. This is one of my favorite ways to make an embossed background stand out because the ink is heavier on the raised parts of the image and almost completely non-existent on the lower parts of the pattern. For stamps and dies, I'm using the homebrew combo from Waffle Flower. I've die cut the large shield image out of light blue cardstock and placed it in my Misty and I'm going to stamp the birthday pun, Hoppy Birthday in Gina K Amalgam Obsidian ink. I had a lot more room on the die cut so I decided to also stamp the relax and enjoy sentiment underneath. I trimmed the wood grain panel down to four by five and a quarter inches so that I could mat it onto the same blue cardstock that I used for the sentiments using some tape runner to adhere it down. I used foam squares to pop up the sentiments. I cut out a bunch of the beer bottle and bottle label shapes from cardstock and decided to cut the bottle out of Studio Katya acetate sheets. Using some liquid adhesive, I'll adhere the clear die cut to the green cardstock die cut. This is a quick and easy way to create a glossy effect. If I had lots of extra time, I could apply layers of glossy accents or some other clear dimensional liquid glue. But to create the same effect quickly and easily, I like this way of doing it. I'll use a mix of dot roller and liquid glue to decorate the bottle with a label and some small die cuts to decorate the label. And then I'll use two foam squares to pop up the bottle and adhere it to the card panel. To embellish the card, rather than using sequins like I normally would, I cut some stars out of the same red cardstock that I used for the small star on the bottle to complete this card. My second tip for creating more guy or masculine type card is to look at basic shapes. One of my favorites is stars because it really is so versatile, you can use them for anyone and any theme. For this embossed background, I used Sunny Studios Dapper Diamonds, another great embossing pattern for guy cards. For the sentiment, I used a Happy Birthday from Waffle Flowers Classic Sentiment Stamp Set, which features some scripty sentiments and some simpler straight font sentiments too. I decided to stamp the sentiment with Chipped Sapphire Distress Oxide Ink because I'm going to be using some navy in this card and I wanted to stamp something different than basic black. I trimmed the embossed panel down to four by five and a half inches, and I'm going to adhere it down to this navy cardstock, which I had used to cut out some of the stars. So I placed tape runner all around the stars and in the center of the cardstock to ensure that my panel will stay adhered down. I stamped the sentiment on the largest yellow star, and I'm popping it up with foam squares. All these stars were die cut with the Waffle Flower Nesting Stars die set, which gives you a ton of different sizes of five point stars. For the rest of the card, I die cut a number of navy, orange, and yellow stars, and I'm adhering them with liquid glue so that only the popped up star will be the one with the sentiment. When creating patterns like this, I like to have some of the die cuts hanging off the edge, so I'll just flip the card over and trim off anything that hangs off with nonstick scissors and then save it for the use on a different edge of the card. Using one shape like stars to create a replicated pattern is an easy way to create a masculine card. 
My third tip is to find a theme that your recipient specifically likes. So my dad has always liked ocean and boat themed cards, and so I have a bunch of stamp sets perfect for that. Let me show you how to make a really quick and easy sailboat card. First, I'm going to die cut three Lawn Fawn Border Wave dies from an A2 piece of light blue cardstock. Next, I'm going to use chipped sapphire distress oxide ink to add some interest to my three wave pieces. At first, I was just going to add ink to the tops of the waves, but I decided I liked the look of a more uneven ink blend over the entire wave. Parts of the cardstock color show through and parts are heavier with ink and I think this gives the waves a more realistic look. Next I cut an A2 piece of white cardstock with Lawn Fawn's Stitched Cloud Border Die and I'm stamping a sentiment from the Lawn Fawn Smooth Sailing stamp set in my Misty with the same Distress Oxide Chipped Sapphire ink that I've used before. I did stamp the sentiment multiple times but I love how clearly the oxides stamp. Next, I stamped two sailboats from the Smooth Sailing stamp set in Gina K Amalgam Obsidian ink. I'm using this ink because I'm going to do some quick Copic coloring of the sailboats. When I want to keep Copic coloring quick and easy, I use either just one or at most two colors for each section of the image I am coloring. I did some very basic blending of two colors for the browns I used, but everything else was just one marker. I adhered the highest wave with dot roller adhesive and did the same with the smaller sailboat that will appear off in the distance. For the second wave, I decided to pop it up with foam squares, making the smaller boat look even further away. For the last wave, I popped it up on two layers of foam squares, giving even more depth to the rest of the card. Using dot roller adhesive, I adhered the larger boat just behind the first wave. For such a simple scene, I love all the dimension you can create just by adhering several layers of waves and using both flat and dimensional adhesive. For some quick additional interest, I'm using a white gel pen to add peaks to the tips of each of the waves. Again, this is a quick and easy way to embellish the scene without adding gems or sequins and therefore keeping it looking a little more masculine. My fourth tip is to take a look at the products you already have and see if you can change them a little bit to make them into something that would be perfect for a guy or masculine themed card. For example, I have this really fun Trinity Stamps t-shirt stamp that says hang in there and is very, very cute. So for this last card, I'm gonna share a quick and easy way to mask off the sentiment, add a little bit of coloring, and turn this cute little t-shirt into a cool football jersey. I'm using an A2 panel of white cardstock in my mini Misty, and I'm going to stamp the Trinity Stamps hang in their stamp with Gina K Obsidian Amalgam ink. Before I ink up the stamp, I'm going to place some Thermoweb purple tape right over the hang in there sentiment inside the shirt, being careful not to cover up any of the other lines of the stamp. Once the sentiment is all covered up, then I ink up the stamp. Next, I carefully remove the purple tape, being really cautious not to remove any of the ink from the main image with my finger on accident. Then I close the misty door to stamp the image. I kept the mask in my hand in case I needed to re-stamp it, but it came out great with just one stamping. I used a Copic marker to color in the hanger, and then I looked up an image of a Pittsburgh Steelers jersey online because that's what my husband's favorite team is, and grabbed a yellow marker to mimic the stripes they have on their sleeves. I didn't measure or anything. The unevenness kind of lends to the look of a jersey that's hanging on a hanger rather than a perfectly straight and perfect line. I used the Copic Multi-Liner, mine is a .3, to outline the yellow stripes just as they are on the actual jerseys. Again, this is not a perfection game and it was quick and easy way to make this stamped image customized. I wanted to stamp some birthday sentiments on the jersey itself, but everything I wanted to use was too long. So I cut the stamps and I stretched them out to make sure that I can get in between the words without cutting any of the letters of the stamp. And then I use a sharp pair of scissors to cut all the way through the stamp. 
The letters on the Steelers jerseys are in gold, so I stamped my happy birthday in fossilized amber distress oxide ink. I temporarily adhered the dye to the jersey with purple tape and ran it through my die cut machine. I was going to add a number one under the sentiment, but I couldn't find a stamp or die that would work, so I decided to stamp another sentiment in black that says, from your number one fan. But again, the sentiment was too long, so this was just a day for cutting sentiment stamps. I placed the entire jersey in my mini Misty and held it in place with the barb magnet and stamped that second sentiment using the same obsidian ink that I used for the outline of the jersey. I die cut the waffle flower stars panel die out of black cardstock and used some tape runner to adhere the die cut panel to some yellow cardstock. Little touches like a star panel die over a piece of cardstock in the team's colors are quick and easy ways to customize a guy card. I used a couple of foam squares to pop up the jersey on the panel. And then I used some tape runner to adhere the whole panel down to a top folding A2 card base. I love making custom guy cards like this and have found that guys with a favorite team really get a kick out of this type of card. If you have other tips for creating masculine cards, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure to hit the bell so you can be notified every time I have a new video available. If you enjoy quick and easy card inspiration, be sure to check out the other videos in this series and I'll link to them here. I'll see you next week for another quick and easy card on Monday. Until then, please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. I kind of did my head. <laughs> So hopefully it is over there. <laughs> oh boy. Okay.